In this Tracer tutorial, I'm going to review opportunities for using Power BI templates to create reusable report structures that connect into your exported Revit data and provide templatized layouts for your reports that can help you quickly jumpstart your um, connection into your building information and you know produce different kinds of insight. Um, as part of this tutorial, I wanted to highlight that we do have some basic Power BI templates available under the Tracer documentation on the Proving Ground Apps website. Um, these templates uh, provide some useful examples for establishing 2D visuals, 3D visuals. Um, they let you explore different Revit data relationships and perform other uh, operations like you know doing unit conversion. Um, all of these types of um, things from visuals to relationships to custom columns can all be templatized um, and then reused from project to project or from Revit model to Revit model, depending on what you want to do. So one of the big advantages for using a template is this idea that you don't have to build every single Power BI report from scratch. Um, if I were to go through this process with um, a from scratch approach, I would go through um, the process of going to Revit, for example. I would go to the tracer command. Um, I would then export my database for my active model. Um, I would then jump into Power BI and connect to that database using get data, using the ODBC connections. I would then, you know, then go through this process of composing my report page. I would lay out visuals, um, import the tracer visuals and set those up and so on. Um, once you do that once, you're able to reuse that report as a template uh, for future projects. Um, and that's what I wanted to kind of show you here is this idea that you can use a template to really jumpstart your uh, report making. So what I'm going to do is go to File, and I'm going to go to Open Report, and I'm going to Browse for Reports. And one of the things that's important to note here is that by default, Power BI Open sets it to a PBIX file. These are you know your normal Power BI report files. Um, what I want to do here is I want to go to Power BI template files instead. And a Power BI template file is essentially a bare bones uh, report structure. It doesn't really contain any data. It just you know uh, contains the layout information, relationship, and connection information that you need to make. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to click on this Revit Data Explorer template and hit open. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up that report um, template, and it's going to prompt me um, because I've set up a parameter here. I, I've I'm now being prompted to enter a file path into an existing database that's been exported from Revit. So what I'm going to do is navigate to one of my databases. Um, in this case, I'm going to check out the um, maybe this uh, it, structural uh, sample model here. Um, I'm going to right click and hold, holding down shift right click, go to copy as path. And I'm going to jump back over to Power BI. I'm just going to paste that path in. And what Power BI is now going to do um, with this template is the template has established um, how to make a connection into this database. So it knows which tables to pull in automatically. It's pulling in documents and elements and different parameters. It also um, has contained within it a series of layouts already established in the template. So um, in this case, what you're going to see is that there are a series of tables that are already pre-made. Um, I have some images uh, indicating, you know, um, you know, tracer and proving ground and things like that. That's all part of the template. Some of these lines and you know dividers are in the template, and then I also have in this template the tracer visuals that have already been set up. So here you can see uh, the 3D visual and the 2D visual. Um, in these freely available templates, we include the demo visual. Um, so if you have, if you're a licensed uh, tracer user. You can always go to the visualizations area and import your licensed visuals, and they'll overwrite these. Um, but this this is you know, essentially what a template does. You know, it's it's already made the connections into the database, um, and it's pulling the tables in that the template is set up to pull in. Um, it has the arranged visuals. Uh, in this case, a set of of tables. 
um, and vis uh, visuals 2D and 3D. Um, it also, as a template, contains within it the relationships uh, that you would want to have um, to make use of this data. So if you're really looking to explore and understand the, the relationships between some of these tracer database tables, this template actually might be a good way to, to start to learn about those and you know, you make a connection into one of your databases and explore this template a little bit to see how these different tables are interacting in the form of a data model. Um, but as you can see here, this particular template is useful for you know, just getting an overview of your information um, inside of the model. We wanted to establish this template as a way to quickly see your three-dimensional geometry, see how that's being set up. Uh, the two-dimensional information is also present here, the vector information, location data, things like room polygons, and, and that data is also represented there. Uh, but you can also see within this uh, template that we have the element records. Um, there's a filter here to slice uh, the data. So if you only wanted to look at one portion of this model, say for example, filter out the floors, um, that will you know, uh, cascade through all these other visuals so we can just see the floor elements um, and how they're represented here. And then we have the parameter tables, which are showing uh, itemized parameter listings for the various elements in the model. So provides a good overview of, of the information and, and really explains the the essential data structure that Tracer uses um, to uh, compose a Revit model. We also have a number of other templates that are a little bit more focused um, on specific types of elements. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a connection in to a room oriented template where I'm only interested in the kind of the room based data. So I'm going to go ahead and browse for my templates again. And I'm going to go to PBIT. I'm ready to set that as my type. And I'm going to go to the 3D uh, templates here. And I'm going to choose the 3D room template metric. And what this is going to do is it's going to prompt me again to make a connection into another model. And I'm going to go ahead and navigate to a database here that I know that has some rooms in it. Um, so this sample model I know has some room objects inside of it. So I'm going to shift right click and copy as path. And I'm going to go ahead and paste uh, that information in there. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through um, the process of making a connection into the room elements table um, within that particular database. And um, sometimes you might get uh, you know, um, some minor errors like this when you uh, load data into templates, uh, some space query errors. Um, you know, maybe a column isn't quite formatted the same in one model to another. So that's kind of normal. I'm going to go ahead and hit close um, and the template will continue to load. Um, but, you know, this, this template's really calibrated to tell a story about just the, the room elements in a given model. And so here you can see it's like that basic house model. You can see that these are the room volumes that are established in that model. Um, and it's only pulling in, in this case, the room elements view from the database. So in th this template is just looking at a very narrow slice of the, the, the building information model that's coming out of Revit. And what I think is also interesting about this from a template standpoint is that there are some custom columns that have been defined in this template. So coming out of Revit, uh, for example, are area qu uh, area quantities uh, from the model. And when Revit exports the numeric data using Tracer, it's using the underlying numerical units. And the underlying numerical units for Revit are decimal imperial. So feet, um, square feet, things like that are um, the, the default underlying units of Revit. So if I wanted to have a metric uh, representation of my numbers, I can create a custom column um, and perform the unit conversion. So here I'm going to click on the area field, and you can see that I'm performing an area conversion to square meters. And what I can do with this template then is now I have this field saved as part of the template. So anytime I load up rooms, I have this option to choose the, the metric version as well. Um, and so th those are you know, some of the reasons why you might use a template, you know, just sort of a jump start and get a specific look at some information, or maybe you're templatizing some operations like this so you don't have to do it every time. 
Um, yeah, it can be a really powerful way to just get going on your reporting and not have to start from scratch every single time you're creating or composing a Power BI report. Um, so we use these a lot uh, when we're kind of doing model analysis and just want consistent ways of, of understanding information. Um, what I did want to do is show one more example um, related to you know maybe a template that's focused on content management. Um, and maybe I just want to understand the family uh, library inside of my model. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File and Open Report and kind of browse for um, one of my template reports. Remember to set to PBIT when you're doing this. You can see that I have a Family Types Explorer. And the Family Types Explorer template is looking specifically at the family types in a model. So uh, what, we, what we can expect to see when we load one of these reports in um, is a collection of available families. In this case, what I'm going to do is go to the um, advanced sample project database that I have here. I'm going to copy as path again, paste that in, and load that up. And again, sometimes you might get these um, load errors. Um, oftentimes it refers to a mismatch type parameter um, in some cases, but oftentimes you can just skip past that and the report will continue to load. And so here you can see that the layout is starting to populate. Um, we have a three-dimensional view um, uh, for viewing the family geometry. We have a graph here as well, and then we have this family browser, and you can kind of see that there's you know some family information that's starting to, to come through. Some of it's quite small. Um, you can see some doors here, but what I might want to do here is instead drill down into some specific uh, family types. And so now I'm kind of going into my family browser and saying, okay, just show me the doors, uh, for example. And now I've kind of just pulled up those door families, um, and I'm cycling through, and I can you know understand those individually. So it's pulling the 3D um, family type information in, in specifics. Maybe I want to look at furniture instead. Um, so here's the furniture information that's been pulled across a couple of tables and chairs and, and things of that nature are being pulled into this template. So again, this, this template's geared to looking at the individual components of a project. Um, and then if I go back to this template, I'm looking at the room spaces and volumes. Um, so if I have a project that has that information, I can look at it. Uh, there and then this one is giving more of a comprehensive overview of my model um, in general showing kind of all the different available elements and categories that have been exported uh, for this particular database. So templates have different uses. Um, they're really meant to be efficient ways of having readily reusable reports so you're not having to build things up from scratch. And hopefully some of these example templates can give you ideas of how you might want to build templates of your own um, and you know, make your workflow more efficient based on what you want to do with your building information.